Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson. And if you've watched some of my recent videos, you know I've gotten way behind on tank maintenance. That big tank behind me has major issues that need dealt with. In fact, everything I own seems like it has major issues. So because of the divorce, tanks, maintenance, terrible. House, terrible. Which means every day I have off of work is spent working. Yeah, we're fixing the house up. It's been a huge job to get everything taken care of. The tank, well, that needs it too. So we're way behind on tank maintenance. So for today's reef update, let's work on tank maintenance. It's early morning and the display upstairs is looking okay. Big thing today is we're going to attack Aptasia up here and we're just going to try to get the glass wiped. We have a lot of other projects to work on. But really, display up top is where I've been putting most of my effort. But you'll see when we go downstairs, maybe I probably should have put more time in downstairs. Next up, we're getting started on the frag tank build. I built that stand yesterday. It's just two by fours, some paint. The 40 gallon breeder is one that's brand new that I've had sitting around the house for years. It's three or four years old. But as you can see by the sticker on it, it's never been used. It's all dusty. It's gonna need some cleaning. But really, Stan turned out pretty good. Not really furniture grade, nothing special. Just some two by fours cut, screwed together, painted. Needs to hold up a tank. That's all I really care about right now. And then the PNW Customs tank has come in. It's a really cool tank, but we got a slight issue with it. Tank temp right now is holding 84.3 degrees. That's way too hot. With a one gallon tank, my biggest concern was heating and cooling. So I ordered the Inkbird. It does both heating and cooling before I ever even got the tank. There's supposed to be another shipment coming with the fan and some other goodies. So there'll be a full review on this tank, but it's set up. So far, it's really cool, other than it's running a little hot, which we got plans for that. And here's the 24 gallon. It's bouncing back pretty good. We've got a little dyno in here, and we've got a whole lot of pest coral. So those pallies and teal mushrooms, I'm always fighting. They're an issue. I need to clean the glass, do a water change today. We'll see how far we got, how far we get. We had a lot of projects today. Downstairs is where the problems are. First, my RODI system sprung a leak. This is about a 10 year old bulk reef supply unit. It's been dropped, it's rusted from too many years of leaking and problems. So just like five minutes ago, I just went ahead and ordered a new one. But what that did was that leak down here, and you can see there's still some water condensation. It's kind of messed up the wood right here on my shelf. So that's a real problem. I haven't been running the lights down here, just trying to let everything recover, get rid of the algae. This tank needs major water changes. For the most part, I run without water changes, but as you can see by all the sediment down here, it's time to do a water change, right? So mainly I do water changes, not to fix water chemistry, but to remove stuff like that. So that's on the list of things to do today, but I don't think it's gonna get done. I don't think we're gonna have the water for it. I need the new RODI, that thing's just not working right, it's not producing much, filters are clogged, it's leaking. So I think that'll happen in the next week or two. Really I want to use the water I have left, 40 gallon up, and get those few toadstools out that are basically rescues. This right here is doing fine, it's just a big holding tank full of water. And then down below. We're kind of getting better. We got lights, we got the Fuge rolling. Fuge is actually doing really well. Um, the old Aqua C EV1000, it is an absolute mess. Like everything just needs pulled and cleaned down here. Like I've got major freaking issues. But right now we're just trying to get this thing to where it is sustaining life correctly. This thing needs tuned again today, cleaned out. I did a treatment for cyano. 
using ChemiClean by Blade Enterprises. Works great, the thing I hate about it is every time I use it, it screws my skimmer up. So today we'll clean the skimmer and get that thing rolling. Calcium reactor, it's um, not functioning. I mean, it's got a little water dripping through it. The problem is my carbon doser died. So I threw the old Milwaukee valve on there. And as you can see, it's in horrible shape. And this solenoid sticks on, so I'm not able to regulate the pH, pH correctly. So right now, we aren't dosing calcium correctly. At Reefstock, I got to talk to Chris Mackley about how he manages his calcium and alkalinity. Chris runs ACI Aquaculture. Like, they grow coral professionally. That's how they earn their living. If anybody knows their way to get the most coral growth, it's going to be Chris. Well, Chris is big on calc wall, sir. So we're going to ghetto rig some cal stoke scene on here today. Oh, yeah. I mean, super ghetto rig. Like, I just went through a divorce. I'm broke. So ghetto rig it is. So for alkalinity control, I'm going super old school. We're going to use calc waltzer with the auto top off and I'm making the world's hokiest alk reactor you can think of, but it's going to be super cheap and I believe it's going to be super reliable. So basically I'm using this old aquamedic reef salt bucket. The reason I like it and the reason I'm using it is it's flat. It's brilliant. Probably holds about five gallons of water, but it's flat. So it'll be really easy to screw some attachments to. So I've got this old float valve. This is one of those adjustable ones. Not really what I want because we got a point of failure here, but it'll be nice because I can adjust it. But last time I tested that, it worked fine. So I think it'll be fine. We've got an old bulkhead. This is seriously from a project I did like 15 years ago, but it should be fine. The rubber on it seems fine. So assuming it holds the water, I'm not too worried about it. So all I really had to buy for this was this one fitting. This will go into the bulkhead to run a hose to it and a valve because I'm going to be able to want to shut this off. Now, they didn't have tubing for this, so I hope I have tubing in the basement. We'll find out. All right, and here's the ghetto rigged calc reactor. Yeah, it's stupid simple. Basically, we're going to gravity feed water to it from the RO tank right here. Got a float valve on it. Don't worry about the little bit of red on here. That is rust. I've tried to clean it off. This valve was sitting on a rusty table so it's got rust on it rust will not hurt my aquarium we put gfo in our tank which is granular ferric oxide ferric oxide is quite literally rust all right so basically we have a float valve and then we have a bulkhead with a little port so i can run a line out of it this will run to the auto top off so this will all be gravity fed all right and then while I'm doing all these projects, I got this tank out here getting painted from the factory or something. There must have been some silicone or something on here and the paint's not sticking to it. So that sucks. I did clean it ahead of time, but clearly not good enough. There was something on there that I just couldn't see. And we're seeing little spots like that on the back, but eh, it'll be good enough. So one of my biggest issues down here is like everything's a mess and old and broken and terrible. So we're gonna attack it one piece at a time. Ideally, I'd rip it all out, like clean, start over, new shelves, new tank, new filtration equipment, all that. It's not in the budget, don't have time for it. So we're gonna piece, do this one piece at a time on a major budget. So yeah, if it's dirty, if it's nasty, it is what it is because, God, it's 10 years old, it's been neglected for eight months. It is what it is. I got to do it one piece at a time on a budget. I've got this all jerry rigged up, but the way it was before is I already had this stuff installed down to this hose. Now I've got a valve here, which is currently off. Now instead of following this line directly down to the tank, we now have it running along here. Yes, forgive the mess. And then down to the tank from the bottom comes up. I've got a shutoff valve and then it goes up to there. The water level of the bucket should be higher. So it should be high enough to fill it. It's time to turn it on, see if it works. All right, first dumbass thing I did was I installed the float valve upside down. 
Yeah, that was bright. So while I wait for the water to fill up for the new calc reactor, I've gone ahead and cleaned the skimmer. Really, we're at that time of year where I just need to pull the entire skimmer and give it a proper clean, but we're not there yet. So now I'm just cleaning it, getting it adjusted right, so it works right. Right now, my goal is to get this system working optimally, then we'll really give it the full clean. I'm hoping to get rid of this calcium reactor. I'm hoping that I can just dose calc and get away with it. This calcium reactor is past its prime. The CO2 regulator needs replaced. The calcium reactor is broken. It's got a lot of issues with it. It's time to replace all of it. My new ghetto rigged calc reactor is gonna work. All right, pretty cool. Looks like it's filling up, shutting off automatically. The goal is to add calc stir it daily. I've got a valve, to turn it off and on so I don't accidentally feed slurry to it. Should be like the cheapest, easiest, best solution. But can it keep up? Who knows? I've gone ahead and added the calc waltzer to the water. The goal is to keep this basically fully saturated. And then I've got this pH pen so I can check it. Now, the water is milky right now. This isn't where you're gonna to wanna to use it. But you can see fully saturated, we're gonna be looking at like a pH of 11, 12, something like that. So right now we're almost 12. So we're fully saturated. When this stuff settles down, it'll be good enough to go back into the tank. And this is how I'm gonna manage it. I'll add more calc, stir things up, based on and clean this out, based on this number right here. So it's a super hokey design. It is a bucket with a float valve and a drain hooked to another float valve and a lid. But it's kind of big and flat, so I get a lot of surface area, which will hopefully keep that pH level up, that water contact with a calc. It'll hopefully dissolve. We're feeding RO right to it. I've got that pH probe so I can test it. Like all of this was stupid cheap. The pH probe was like 15 bucks. The only thing I really had to pay for was like that one fitting you see leaking down there. Yeah, I'll have to fix that. Float valve, I already had. Tubing, I already had. And then the shutoff valve, I had to buy that. I've got like 20 bucks in all of this. If it works, sweet. If it doesn't work, I'm out 20 bucks. I just have to watch the tank, the alkalinity, all that. It's an experiment, I'm gonna monitor it. But it could be like the cheapest, simplest, best method for dosing elk? Well, not best. Ideally, we wouldn't do this through the auto top off. All right, and here's the tank. Things are doing okay. We're coming back from a lot. Coral health is seeming pretty good, except for a few little exceptions, like the pectinia over here. That thing, I think it's gonna die. It just keeps receding, pulling back. Sucks. Bigger problems, the Aptasia. There's a hell of a lot of Aptasia in here. I've got some nuisance coral, like those green teal pallies in the back that are going crazy. And I've got algae. If you look towards the back, above the money, yeah, we're getting some pretty terrible algae in the back. So we're gonna give the algae a scrub and I'm gonna hit the Aptasia. I've been using the Aptasia X. I haven't been getting the results I wanted. So I'm gonna use some old school Kent Marine calc. I mean, seriously, this stuff's way old school. Check that out. 06. Yeah, it's not something you'd wanna use in a tank anymore for like dosing calc. And yeah, I, have, I have some new stuff, but I think for actually killing Aptasia, it'll be fine. Basically, I'm gonna make a thin paste, put it into a syringe, that I can actually inject it directly into the Aptasia. I used to do this and have pretty good luck. In the future, I plan to get some peppermint shrimp and that should completely cure the problem. But for now, not in the budget. Let's take a minute and let's talk about Calc Waltzer because Really, I'm not following a lot of rules and I could really screw some stuff up. And if you do exactly what I do, you could 
too. So basically I'm using Kalkwalzer downstairs to dose calcium and alkalinity to the tank. Ideally, we'd have something like the Triton monitoring the calcium alkalinity and then using that to dose and then only the auto top off would come on to take up top up water as needed. I don't have a Triton, I don't have a controller. So I'm going with what I got. People have done this for years and it's worked pretty well. And in fact, when I first started the old 90 gallon, that's what I did. But I was using a pump instead of gravity feed and I ended up having pump problems. So hopefully I don't have valve problems. We'll find out. It's always a risk, it really is. Okay, and then putting alkalinity into the tank. You never, or calc directly into the tank. Really, you should never be dosing calc directly into your tank. It's gotta be mixed up into solution and it's only the effluent on the top that should be going to the tank. That's the clear solution. So you see me putting it into the tank with a syringe. That's actually fairly dangerous. Now. This is a big tank. I have a light solution mixed up. As soon as it hits the salt water, it kind of goes to a solid. And what I'm trying to do is get it inside the Aptasia where it'll burn it from the inside. But you saw that first one, it plugged a little and then poof, popped out. Well, yeah, that happens. So that can float around the tank, get inside your coral, you have something sensitive, it can burn it. So this isn't a method I'm recommending really for anybody, it's just what I'm doing because it's what I have on hand and the Aptasia X wasn't doing the job for me. The right answer, dozen peppermint shrimp, but it's just something I haven't done yet. Hopefully soon, it'll be in the budget. It's really, I could probably afford it right now. It's just the timing of getting a shipment in, stuff like that. So soon, hopefully we'll get peppermint shrimp, get it right. I've been using this method since I started reefing in like 2006 with varying success. Seems like it works better on the big fat Aptasia than the little ones, because really you gotta get it inside and inject it. So really this is a stopgap measure to start slowing the Aptasia growth. It's not gonna solve my problem. So I wouldn't really recreate this on your own, but you know this channel, it's all about keeping it real. And that's what I'm doing today because that's what I have on hand that's local that I can do right now, today, to slow this problem down. It's been kind of a long day. It's about two in the afternoon. I still gotta do some other stuff around the house and spend some time with Ian. So I think that's about it for aquarium stuff today. But I think we did pretty good even though I didn't get everything done I wanted to. The 40 gallon still outside drying so it's not gonna get water in it today. Well, maybe late this evening. We'll see how things go. The tank upstairs, I feel like it's going in the right direction. The Aptasia levels will hopefully come down. Right thing to do is get those peppermint shrimp in there. Hopefully I can get those soon, fingers crossed. And then I'm really excited to see how my super budget DIY calc reactor goes. Yeah, it's not the perfect way to do it and there's so many better ways, but given the budget and what I'm trying to accomplish, I think it's gonna work out pretty well. Maybe not what I recommend, but you know what? It's kind of me, I know what I'm doing and I can make it work. So we'll see how that goes. And then weekend at the wholesaler, like I'm gonna start slinging coral again. At least that's the goal. Tentatively, April 9th. So follow my Facebook page for that. You're not following me on Facebook? Well, it's linked down below, I'll wait. Okay, now that you've followed me on Facebook, watch for Weekend of the Wholesaler and come see me tentatively Saturday, April 9th. But it was a fun bunch of little projects today. I'm just trying to get caught up on everything in life. Budget small and we'll get there. But what's that you're saying? You wanna see the 24 gallon? But it's dirty. It's like, I haven't done anything to it. I didn't get the water chain. You really wanna see it. Like I haven't given you much of an update on that thing at all, have I? Quick update? All right, let's do a quick update on the 24 gallon. 
All right, and here's the 24 gallon. We're gonna go too crazy with it. Things are going pretty well. Zoas are starting to regrow pretty well. We've got a little bit of dyno in here. Biggest concern, because this tank has had major issues with dyno. This entire rock has been taken over with those kind of teal brown pallies. It probably just needs to come out. And in fact, I've got teal pallies kind of taken over everywhere. Kind of becoming a problem. And then the leathers are doing really well. So is the Alien Eye Chalice. And that pink Nephia, look at it. Like as much problems as this tank has had, look at what the leathers have done. Like they all just need fragged up. The LPS definitely took it hard, but the candy canes are coming back. The brains are nearly dead. They did terribly through this, but the Monty did pretty well. So there you go. Quick little update on the 24 gallon. It's coming along. If you would like to support Mile High Reefers, hit the thanks button, the little heart with a dollar sign on it, and help contribute to the cause. I would greatly appreciate it. And it's nighttime. I'm loving the spring weather in Colorado. We're finally warm enough that I can hang out on the back porch, enjoy life. But I'm sitting here thinking like, I missed something in my video. What I showed you with the calc isn't exactly how Chris Meckley said to do it. His method is much more advanced. So I would recommend YouTubing Chris Meckley. I think with reefs.com and stuff, he talks about calcium, alkalinity. He's all about the calc, but he has a better way to do it. So YouTube his stuff. It's fantastic. But what do you guys think? This is kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge update project video. A lot of fun. So if you liked it, hit the like button. You got any comments, put them in the comment column and feel free to hit that thanks button. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Mile High Reefers. I think Wednesday I'm shooting some stuff with Ken. Hopefully Thursday I'll be heading down to Hammerhead Corals. So a lot coming up. Should be lots more to come. Laters.